Good morning to you. A very good Wednesday morning to you here on uh, the platform. We're just standing by for National MP Simeon Brown, who's going to be our first interview this morning, talking about the Pene Henare issue, um, which isn't getting a lot of mainstream coverage. And you know what? I'm almost now at the point where I don't bother uh, with mainstream news because it so seldom covers issues which I think are important and vital to New Zealanders. Um, One story did get a run... uh, that did get a run yesterday was the latest Talbot Mills poll. And Talbot Mills are a polling company. They're as good as any other polling company um, that gets covered in New Zealand. And the Talbot Mills poll, uh, they are also, by the way, the internal pollsters for the Labour Party. Uh, And they released a poll which suggested quite strongly there will be a National Act government. Uh, after the next uh, election, and a poll that showed a real divide, uh, I think a 5-6% uh, or point drop for Labour, National only down one. Um, Hipkins still is ahead of Luxon, but having taken quite a hit. And basically, I guess, a poll that everyone was expecting. Um, and important in the context that it changes the narrative. And there's no way that uh, Labour trolls and spin doctors can actually say, oh, no, it's neck and neck. It doesn't look quite so neck and neck now. We're going to talk about that later in the programme. I'd also say the interesting thing about that poll, it put New Zealand first on 4%, and that's as good as. That's there or thereabouts. And I want to talk about the implications of that for the election campaign, which is fundamentally underway, uh, folks. Uh, normal service will resume after the election. Um, and part of the drop in Labour support may be put down, uh, may be put down to a kind of snowballing number of of scandals around this government. And the question, the big C of competence: is this government competent, or is it another C, corrupt? Um, Nanaya Mahuta is still a minister. Despite what lay people might consider to be highly questionable hirings involving members of her family or people associated with her, and some curious circumstances involving her standing aside while her husband was appointed to a role and then coming back into her job. And the impression has most certainly been left, though our public servants have jumped through all sorts of hoops to say nothing to see here. The impression has been created that there is some nepotism with Nanaya Mahuta, and that sticks. But the latest uh, member of the Cabinet, also Māori, um, though I'm not sure that that really makes any difference, is Pene Henari. Um, as I said, you won't have read about this story, and I've been very busy, and I need to find more details of this and what's gone on here. And one person who has been talking about it and asking questions in Parliament is the National MP Simeon Brown. He joins us uh, on the line, or just let me get my computer where he joins us on the line now. Simeon, uh, welcome to the platform. Good to have you with us. Uh, oh, are you be with you, Sean. Are you guys popping the champagne corks after that Talbot Mills poll or not? No, not at all. I mean, there's still three months to go till the election, and whilst it's an encouraging result, uh, we've got a lot of work to do to keep getting out there, talking to New Zealanders about our plan uh, to change the country and get it back on the right track, uh, and that's what we're doing. But uh, the election day was on October 14, and we're working very, very hard to win on that date. All right. The Penny Hanari story, and again, the result of some excellent work by a uh, columnist and writer we publish often, Tom, Thomas Cramner, not his real name, unfortunately, and I still can't quite understand why he uses um, uh, or, or remains anonymous, given the quality of his work. Outline for those who haven't heard Simeon. Well, the accusation, the circumstances that are raising questions, or for you, raising questions around Penny Hanare. Well, what we have here is a, a situation where Penny Hanare is the Associate Minister of Health. Uh, his partner, uh, Sky Kamuda, uh, is the CEO of a company called Tartal, which uh, effectively is an ad agency slash uh, they help with cultural advice, translation, uh, and that company has been receiving uh, significant numbers of contracts from the Ministry of Health. Can you put a dollar figure on? Can you put a dollar figure on that? Around three hundred thousand dollars worth of, of taxpayers' money from the Ministry of Health. Okay. On top of that, receiving contracts from all over the rest of the government, 
The key ones, though, that are of concern here are the ones where uh, are from the Ministry of Health, where um, Penny Hanani, her partner, is also the Associate Minister of Health. And it raises questions, again, similar to those with Nanai Mahuda around conflicts of interest, perceived conflicts of interest, and in how this was managed. Now, of course, nothing was disclosed on the government's website of, of conflicts of interest, and, uh, and it doesn't appear that any conflicts of interest were declared as part of the process of these contracts being awarded. And so, again, you end up in a situation where uh, the perception is that you have a minister, an associate minister and his partner receiving contracts. And okay. the perception is Do that we know if these were tendered, went through normal processes? We, we, we can't well, most know that. Of them are quite, most of them are quite small, so they wouldn't have gone through the tender process. Um, they're all under sort of $100,000, and, and it's sort of above $100,000 where the, the, the requirements of tendering kicks in. Uh, and so, again, lots of little contracts, um, some of them, you know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000, not large contracts, but adding up to about three hundred thousand dollars. All right, which will keep you in business, won't it? Yeah, and look, I mean, the reality here is, as, as, I, as I said when we were uh, discussing the situation with Anaim and Mahuda, there is uh, no issue with uh, family members doing work for government. Yeah, we're too uh, small a country is, to, have, to to make to be that pure, aren't we? But the but the question is, how do we manage those contracts? How do we do we make sure we have to, how do we make sure they're declared? Mm. How do we make that sure that the process for appointment is, is, is transparent? And if there are two different uh, agencies who can do the same work and they've got the same quality, uh, then the preference should be for the company which doesn't have the conflict. Well, well should it? Because I'm presuming that Tartal is a government approved provider and there, there, there yes, is a thing that, you get, what, you go through a process and they give you a tick and say, yeah, you're clean, you don't uh, appear to have risk to the government. It's a kind of pre pre approval system, right? Yeah, and that, that's that's my assumption too. But I mean, we we went to the public service commissioner over the situation with the Naima Huda, and whilst uh, the report came back and said, look, there's no no evidence of any ministerial involvement, it did come up with a number of recommendations around how departments and ministries could be doing a far better job of managing conflicts or perceived conflicts of interest at their end. And the same point applies here around these processes and those are the questions which need continue need to continue to need to be asked. Um, yeah. Okay, so has Pene Hanari Thomas Cramner has written pieces that as good as accuse him of some sort of nepotism, right? Has he responded to this? Well the government has put out a statement, uh, I understand yesterday to to some media agencies who are who are asking Effectively, their argument is uh, Penny Hinari had disclosed his relationship with the Cabinet Office. You told me he had uh, uh, well, no, Earlier in this interview, you said there was no declaration of a conflict of interest. It's not disclosed on the website. So it's disclosed uh, on some internal uh, internal process, so there's no transparency around that. So apparently it was disclosed. Uh, this is their argument, that it was disclosed internally, um, and but it wasn't published. Uh, and and there was a, a process in place to ensure that he wasn't involved in any of these decisions around these contracts. Okay, cetera, if that is so, that it was it was disclosed, there was a process to make sure he's away from it. There's no story here, right? Well, there's still a question around what uh, whether those recommendations around the public service commission, the public service commission made last year, and how departments are managing the same the issues. Were they aware? Uh, what were they doing to to manage those processes to again deal with the perception? Uh, mm. And that was that was what was raised, and I think Thomas Cram has been writing about this on on, on Twitter as well, about mm. uh, whether those uh, perceptions were understood at that department level, and what processes were they going through to make sure that that was well documented that mm. they were dealing with that perception. And issue I guess you would want to see time. proof of this internal disclosure. Well, I mean, and, that, and we've and got a right point, as the I, public to know about that. Correct, and again, at the, the, the fundamental point here is. We understand conflicts exist from time to time. We're a small country, uh, but we want to make sure that these decisions are made in an open and transparent way to ensure there's no favouritism. That's ultimately what it comes down to. Mm. And taxpayers expect that, whether it's a national government or a Labour government. That yeah. is ultimately what uh, taxpayers expect of their government and of their ministers. Yeah. When it comes down to disclosure and, and transparency, which, of course, the former Prime Minister uh, campaigned on and, and talked a lot about, we've also had uh, this week... 
the Ombudsman's decision that certain texts pertaining to the performance or issues around Kitty Allen um, mm. will not be released to the public, despite the fact they were texts between officials on official devices discussing official matters or the performance mm. of a Cabinet Minister. Do you have any response to that? Well, look, I guess our, 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 my view is it remains that it is in the public interest um, in regards to those texts that they should have been released. I mean, I accept the recommendation or the, or the decision of the of the chief ombudsman. Do you? Uh, I accept it in, 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 the, in, the, in the fact that uh, there's, there's not much more that can be done. Uh, the chief ombudsman has the ability to make those determinations. They have to weigh up uh, the the competing interests of public interest and also the ability to withhold information under the uh, Official Information Act and the, and the provisions that are in, in that act. He has had to do that. Um, my view is uh, it would have been better if transparency had been accorded in this situation due to the fact that the text message is related directly to you know, the behaviour and conduct of a Minister of the Crown. Uh, that's my view. But at the end of the day, uh, the Ombudsman has to make those decisions. All right. Um, are you going to be asking more questions in Parliament or anywhere else about uh, Penny NRA and yes, Tato ad agency? We're continuing to lodge some questions, uh, written questions around that, um, trying to understand more of the situation, uh, how those contracts were awarded, what decisions and how, how those decisions were made. We'll continue to do so. Mm. Uh, Simeon, do you think that you might be making a rod for your own back? Talbot Mills tells us there's likely to be a change of government. Boy, you are going to have to be purer than the driven snow when it comes to awarding contracts and using consultants in government. Well, I think the reality is there is the taxpayer has high standards around how these uh, issues are dealt with. Whether, and as I said, whether it's a Labour government or a national government, um, we expect taxpayers' money to be spent appropriately. Uh, we expect conflicts of interest to be managed appropriately. Christopher Luxon's made his expectation to us as a caucus very clearly um, around how he expects us to be managing conflicts in those relationships. So that's something which, you know, we do have a high expectation of ourselves uh, and we intend to bring that to government uh, if we're elected later this year. All right. So there won't be any of this questionable stuff going on under National and, you know, if someone gets caught doing something wrong, they'll resign? Well, the reality is Christopher Luxon's made his, his, his views very clear to us around how conflicts of interest should be managed. Um, and he has uh, already put in place, you know, conversations around, around that now. Uh, and those conversations will continue if we win, we win the election. I mean, our view is very clear that we, uh, you know, we, we live in a small country. There are conflicts of interest that exist from time to time. How they're managed needs to be done in a transparent and open way. Uh, and it needs to be... Uh, you know, the best person should be winning the contract and it shouldn't be based upon relationships. OK. Those are, are you very suggesting clear, very clear. here and now that this was? No, I'm not suggesting that this one was, but what I am saying is that we need to avoid the perception of that as well as the reality of that. All right. Uh, so, I mean, I wonder also if there is much upside to continuing to pursue stories like this Given that the polls would suggest the worm has turned, it's already perhaps a mortally wounded government, um, and there might be other things to move on to rather than kicking it while it's down. Well, I mean, the reality is these are issues in relation to the government. Our, one of our jobs is, is, as the opposition is to ask questions and to hold ministers to account, uh, which is which is what we have been doing. Uh, whether that's Michael Wood with the fact that he failed to disclose shares and failed mm. to manage his conflicts of interest, whether it's, you know, Nai Mahuda, whether it's Stuart Nash, whether it's Penny Hinari. I mean, the, the, the unfortunate reality is this government gives us so much content. Uh, yeah. but, but, the, but the point is it is also our job to ask those questions. Yeah. Uh, Simeon, I thank you very much indeed uh, for your uh, time this morning, and this is an issue that we at least... Oh, look, that's the other thing. Not a lot of coverage in mainstream media about this. Not a lot of traction for it. No, but your show always always uh, asks the hard questions. Okay, do you think they don't want to know about possible problems with the government and the mainstream media? or? Well, I think to be fair, I mean, there has been um, 
I, I did an interview with Heather, Heather Duplessis Allen on News Talk ZB about it last yeah. week. Um, there has been a number, there's been a couple of other articles written. But the point here is, um, you know, there's a, our job is to continue to ask the questions and, um, and, and the media have a role in that as well. Simeon, I thank you very much indeed uh, for your time. That is Simeon Brown, uh, National MP for Pakuranga. Let's have a, a quick break and we got some other issues uh, to talk about. Connecting to the platform. It's easy to connect with us and the platform family of listeners. You can call and tell everyone what you think on our talkback line 0800 33 283 0800 debate. Text us 